How's it going? It's me again. White backdrop. Different colored shirt. Floral. Feeling good. Great day outside. Great great day to be alive in Detroit. Ooh, I'm here with Nolan Edwards once again. Nolan, how are you doing? How's it going? I'm doing all right. People have called you the young Jamie of WeWork. <laughs> the young Jamie of WeWork. Oh, I'm so so honored. <laughs> I never compare you to someone else, man. You're your own you're your own man. Thanks. How's everybody doing out there? <laughs> <Great>. <laughs> um would are we gonna be able to get uh what maybe the comment feed on the video? It's a possibility. It's I a can possibility. see here. Not important. You can just read them off if anyone comments mm-hmm. anything. Basically what we're gonna be talking about today is similar it's an extension of um the last conversation we had with andre um i just been thinking about personality a lot lately and uh there's all these kind of paradigms to help you think about uh personality and why we act the way we do and why certain people act the way they do and how to get along with people and understand where they're coming from based off of social science models um the particular model that i wanted to get into today is called the big five personality traits uh, a good acronym is ocean or canoe it stands for uh, the acronym uh, refers to openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. Those are all very, very large, broad terms that aren't really objective um, because uh, you can't. The thing about personality and identity and social science is it's hard to. Um, they're just semantics. You're just talking about words in association with other words to get as close as you can to uh, a definition of this thing, but you'll never really get there. It's, it's uh, abstract. It's not concrete. It's a, it's a concept. Um, and so it's always been fascinating to me and I kind of wanted to get into it. Um, and again, it's, uh, they're just paradigms. Like um, you, maybe some of you out there have read the five love languages and maybe you got some sort of idea like, Oh man, that makes sense based on how this person was interacting uh, with me or how I was acting or what I feel like I need. And, uh, it just kind of gives you some ideas to understand people and their behavior in certain ways. It's by no means like you were born this way or this is the way you are at all times. Similar to, you know, this the Myers-Briggs personality test is another one. Uh, the Ian, <laughs> I wanted to say Enemans test, but I know that's a coffee cake. <laughs> you ever take the Enemans coffee cake personality test? Oh, jeez. Enemans <laughs> personality. There's all sorts of personality tests. Uh, I remember the earliest personality test I took was in uh, probably sixth grade. They divide you into blue, orange, green, and gold. Um, gold being the type A organized uh, kind of leaders of, of the uh, group. The green being the introverted uh, intellectual, but also kind of the in their own world people. The blue being the emotional and you know, sensitive and also you know artistic and you got the orange with the active, extroverted, and um, I guess I'll leave it with that. And I got a tie between three, so I had no idea which one I was. So maybe this is an, uh, an early uh, curiosity based on that. Do you see the comments on there? No, I can't see. Oh, yeah, sort of. Sort of. What are we getting? Okay. I can't <laughs> – I can, like, see that there's something there. I can't read How it, though. That? Is that big, big enough for you? Uh, I got you. Do you want to scoot over maybe a little bit? Hmm. There you go. There you go. Um, Nolan, have you ever been in a situation you're uh, you're at a standstill with a, this other person? Like you don't understand where they're coming from. They don't understand where you're coming from, and you don't know what to do. Um. Yes. Yes, I have been. Could be in business. Could be in personal relationships. Could be with your own family. One hundred percent. Yes. What What is something that you like to do to try and bridge that gap or make a uh, consensus compromise negotiate what do you what's the thing that you like to do you just gotta you've got to talk and you've got to set forward expectations when you very first like go into something Mm -hmm. like you you kind of explain like kind of how you work and kind of how how you uh you know make yourself available with inside of a company And, um, that's kind of like what I did with like, with my last job. Mm -hmm. Um, they kind of just took advantage though, but 
you know, when you, when you state, like, you know, when you come in, you're like, okay, so here's my strengths, here's my weaknesses. I do better in this area. If you put me in this area, I'll perform exceptionally well. I know you have other people that might be able to fit in that other area that you need help in, but I'm going to be upfront and let you know like what I can and can't do. Um, which isn't a whole lot. I can roller skate and run, <laughs> run a live stream. That's about How it. Did roller skating come into play in your last job interview? Um, they actually asked me because I have it. I have it included on my uh, my resume um, that I'm a that I'm a DJ at a roller rink and yeah. all that. And it's it's always like a it's always like a conversation thing. Like they're always like, oh well, how did you get into that? And yeah, it's, like, it's just that makes you interesting. That makes you it's a long. They wanna, it's a long story. It's almost better to be interesting than good. I don't, <laughs> I don't know how exactly that applies. It's yeah, like I get it. A good movie yeah. versus a movie that you've never seen before. I don't know. Um, there's a certain amount of creativity that they assume when you talk about rollerblading and dancing. Correct. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So I would say that you're, you have a high trait in openness. Openness is one of these, uh, five personality traits, uh, openness being, you know, relative to openness to experiences. Like you're open to trying new things. You're very, you're creative and you're curious. Um, right. And the, the low end or the, the low version of openness in a personality would be someone that's very cautious and consistent to the point where they have a hard time doing new things or thinking outside Correct, the box. Correct, yes. Yeah. Which, and I was thinking about openness, and I was listening to this clinical psychologist, and he was talking about, you know, to take a creative person, and whatever uh, that means to you, uh, wh- uh, what a creative person is, according to this, it's if, if you're uh, how open you are to experiences versus, you know, if you want to try something because it's new, or you don't want to try something because it's new, that's a clear indicator of how open you are. I mean, obviously there are, there's so many like case by case basis there, but we'll just leave it at that. And for a creative person to sit in one place and not have the ability to be creative, it's like slowly killing them. Like they just have to be creative all the time because right. that's how they live. It's like, it's like taking an extroverted person and putting them in, solitary confinement it's like <laughs> like you're kind of it's not what they want to do it's like and i don't know where that comes from like that's that's my biggest curiosity when it comes to personality is like where does all this come from like are you born creative what do you think i think that um when you when you pick up like a trait or like when you pick up um something like you come across like a hobby or something like that. Like not everybody comes across something that, you know, is directly so, you know, impactful in their life that it becomes like a, like a hobby or a talent. But Mm -hmm. when, when you do come across something like that, like it does take a very life changing like role in, in what you do. Like a lot of, a lot of hobbies take up a lot more time now, you know, time you didn't value in the past now becomes time that you have to put towards that hobby. You didn't think you had time until you made time for what you want to do now. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of kind of how I think it all all stems from there, you know. Mm-hmm. Do you think it's kind of uh, like we know that negative reinforcement does not work as well as positive reinforcement. Mm-hmm. And if you positively reinforce someone based on what they're what they want to do, say if someone b- is creative at a young has a creative endeavor at a young age and they're very positively reinforced they're probably going to be inclined to continue doing that right yeah and so and from that point of view i think it's it's um kind of learned um but when these things happen at such a young age when you find an edge in something at such a young age it might as well be nature because it's happened so early on you can hardly remember right time um unless you like repressed your entire entire right exactly yeah um, so th- th- it was, it was interesting to me. If you have a, if you have a high trait openness, you're a very creative person, you know, to stick one of these people in a job for, and have them be there for a long time. So you're going to sign a five-year contract with this job and you don't like it, man, good luck keeping them and good luck keeping them happy. Um, and so if you're a creative person stuck in something, a situation like that, um, that could be a clear indicator of why you aren't happy because it may be at your it's in your nature to be creative um and the thing with being creative especially um in an industry or in business like 
high openness people tend to be artists and entrepreneurs. Right. Um, while the latter tend to be pe- tend to be very good at craft, or maybe n- I don't, I'm not sure about that last part, but um, if you if you're high, you have a high amount of consistency. I mean, what's a job that has a high amount of consistency, but is also very like a valuable job? I don't know. Um, Following the rules, and science, science maybe. I would say anything that's um, beneficial externally from financial responsibility, like mm-hmm. you know, medical or or um you know benefits i mm-hmm. guess for lack of a better term that's what they call it inside of companies but yeah. if you're going to work a 9 to 5 you damn well better work a 9 to 5 that's giving you good stuff you know <laughs> yeah. like you 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 don't want to just sit there and and work a 9 to 5 and not get anything out of it you know and people people will go and work you know at places that are convenient to work a 9 to 5 to you know, fast food places and stuff like that. And certain places don't, you know, it's a, maybe a family business or whatever it might be. Right. But they don't, they don't go and work there um, for, for, you know, what they get out of it. They go there for convenience, but you need to go and at least work and get where you get benefits out of it as well too. Mm-hmm. Money is great, but there's a lot of things that cost a lot more money that you don't make that things that people have signed up for can cover you for as well. Mm -hmm. Um, As much as they don't want to, as much as insurance doesn't want to pay things off or anything like that, but you need to go and and work a job that at least has some sort of additional beneficial value to that as well. Yeah. If you're going to go that route, Um, Ben, Benji, Trosh. Uh, Trosh. Hey Benji. um, Said, or you could be creative out of pure fucking spite. (laughs) Spite, spite of who? Spite of what? I'm, w- I'm away for an answer, Bench. <laughs> <laughs> spite of what? See, they say if you have, if you have low trait openness, then you're very good at following the rules. And there's, I mean, we need people who are very good at following the rules and believe and trust the rules and are good at taking procedure and taking instructions. If you have high openness and it's kind of hard for you to follow the rules because you question all the rules. Like, why is this the way to do it? Why not think outside the box? Why not try something new? And sometimes that really slows you down because a very open and creative person wants to try all these new things. But if you want to be successful as a creative, you're kind of like creating all these things in one at once and hoping that, it, it's the perfect item at the perfect time that people need. And um, so they say if you want to just like, you know, pursue creative endeavors is to have something stable and pursue your creative endeavors on the side. Because to be financially kind of uh, stable as a creative, like it's pretty tough because you're always trying to fit that perfect mold because of the, what you're creating is such a specific thing that the chances that it is needed by a large group of people to the point where you're going to make a lot of money off it is is low so when people say hey (laughs) most of the time when you tell people that you're going to do this big creative endeavor they say don't do it because what's the point of benji benji says the world my creative my creativity comes from rage (laughs) rules are for squares (laughs) the world spite the world benji what in the world do you sp- specifically? What in the world do you spite? You can't spite the entire planet. Rules are for the squares. My creativity comes from rage. I know he's fucking with me, but I want. I'm calling his bluff. Benji, you're not an angry person, or maybe you are, because you're so happy on the outside. That's kind of how it works, isn't it? The happiest people have the most rage, or or something like that, or the quietest people are the. I've got friends in low places. Benji, I'm not making any judgments on you. I'm not giving you any sort of advice because clearly I'm not qualified to. <laughs> I'm just talking the shit out because I enjoy it and I'm interested in it. Uh, I wanted to move on to the next one. The he next says, He says I disagree. Disagree with what? <laughs> your, your philosophy my philosophy well you're it's not exactly my philosophy my main passion is deforestation <laughs> <laughs> can we just call benji spite, spite the plan. benji i'm gonna send you a, a, a zoom a zoom uh a zoom invitation i'm gonna do it right now spite the plan <laughs> benji i i when i flew back to la i got on the same flight as benji we were going to make this film, 
uh, and as soon as we decided we couldn't make it because of uh, Corona, we both got on the same flight back. All right, I'm gonna send him a uh, a quick invite. Um, not exactly my philosophy. This is what this is what I want to say in regard to that. It's just this uh this paradigm that was created by man. I don't really know who it was, but it's talked about in like highly academic social science like uh you know courses and stuff. This uh this big five personality traits. The next one is conscientiousness. Which is if you're you're high in conscientiousness, you're efficient and organized, and if you're low in conscientiousness, you're easygoing and, and careless. They say. Um, they also say conscious conscientiousness is a indicator towards like someone who is industrious and cannot sit still and do nothing. They feel like they always have to be doing something and cannot relax. You might be high in conscientiousness, and if you're low in conscientiousness, you might just be a little bit more carefree uh, next time i can't remember benji, benji's email benji said next time i'm in your boy's gotta eat all right but i'll send it to him anyway if he wants to join it at any point um so conscientiousness like you may know someone or you might be someone who has high conscientiousness which is like you feel this this obligation to the like your community or to the w world to always be partaking in some sort of labor because you feel like it's your responsibility to do so. So it's so hard for you to sit around, to relax. You're always trying to solve problems. You're not, it, it's difficult to relax. I kind of find myself in that, in that category. Like I'm always trying to do all these new things or there's always something to do, always some way to improve, to improve your business, to improve yourself, to, to optimize whatever kind of space you're in. And it's very difficult to relax. And you need to relax. You need to recharge. You're going to burn out or something like that along those lines. Um, and on the other end, so if, if you're living in a house and one person has high conscientiousness and the other person has low conscientiousness, one person is going to see the other person as as uptight, as um, just like can't relax. It's just like go, 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 go. And the other person is going to see them as – or the the high conscious conscientiousness person is going to see the low conscientiousness person as messy and unable to kind of just get going or stand up for themselves or get organized. And so I, I was listening to this talk about you. A lot of people probably lived with a roommate where your standard of cleanliness is slightly higher than theirs or slightly lower than theirs, and so. You might think that one plate more is <laughs> – one, one more plate in the sink is a reason to clean it. Or one more piece of garbage on top of the pile, that's when it's time to take out the trash. But they think much earlier than that. And so you guys are constantly un – unless you finally discuss that and discuss why. Like it's, it's, it's one of those things that you don't ever talk about, but it bothers you. Like, it's one or the other. Like, there's no possible chance. I mean, there's a chance, but that you and your roommate or the person that you're living with have the same exact standard of cleanliness or organization. Like, one person's always thinking the other one's messy, and the other person's always thinking the other person's, like, is too c concerned about this. And so that's what conscientiousness is about. Uh, the third one is extroversion. Um, high extroversion being your outgoing energetic, you get energy from parties, you get energy from being with people. Um, and the, uh, opposite of that, or the low end of extroversion would be introversion, which, which is where you're more solitary and reserved. Um, so if, if going to a party or being with a lot of people drains you of energy, then you probably, you know, have low extroversion. And what bothers me a little bit about the whole extroversion introversion paradigm is that some people be like, Oh, I'm extroverted. So I'm like this, or I'm interested. I'm introverted. So I'm like this, but these things are adaptable and you are adaptable and we change constantly. And there might be times where you're smack dab right in the middle and you don't know whether you're extroverted or introverted, but just because you take this personality test and it says you're this, 
that that doesn't mean you have the right to act like a dick or like <laughs> or to not change negative things that you know about yourself because if you know that there are negative things about you um you have an obligation to try and make those better or else uh, or else what no <laughs> or else like what does that mean about you um you don't know how to do it well <laughs> well and that's that's i mean i think that's a i think that's a viable pursuit to want to find out the things about you that you can improve from a personality standpoint based off of paradigm. I'm scared. <laughs> what? I'm scared. I'm scared. Why are you scared? I don't want to know. <laughs> you don't want to know? Well, I think, I think that's most know. people's fears. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's just me. I don't know. Maybe if the people that are watching want to chime in on that. But I don't know. I guess maybe some people don't want to figure out everything. You know, I was watching something today. Um forgot what it was and it was like uh what if i found out that i had what if i don't want to know if i have cancer but like they're telling me it could be cancer what if i just don't want to know because i don't want to have to deal with that i don't know i heard somebody say something say that today i forgot what it was but i was watching that earlier yeah but i don't know i don't know maybe, maybe it's just me maybe why wouldn't you want to know because you become content in where you're at i guess uh, that would be my excuse. <laughs> you don't. Fe- you just don't want to change. You no, I feel change. like I feel like I'm doing fairly decent. Um, I feel like I have a path that I'm going along, and no, I wasn't saying <laughs> you specifically. I'm oh. saying like, but yeah, well, why, why why someone wouldn't want to uh, know that if they had cancer or not? It's kind of what I was getting at. Oh, um, because uh, just. I guess not wanting to know that information, like if they were ill or maybe they just wanted to go about their lives normally and let things happen, you know, and, you know, some people don't believe in that. People believe that you shouldn't stick your kids with needles for vaccinations, you know, people believe anything, you know, so, um, but for something like this, I, I, I feel like in, in the example of what it is, you know, um, certain people may not want to know that information just because of, of, of livelihood, you know, they just might not want to know it because they don't want to have to go into a hospital and sit in a hospital bed. And maybe they just want to live out their course of their life. Some people don't believe in modern medicine, you know, those kind of peoples are like that. So people, not people, sorry, but (laughs) people. Yeah. I, I guess, I guess where I find the utility in it is, if you're trying really hard to understand more about other people and behavior and your own behavior, this is a good place to kind of go. Like, and there's, there's all sorts of ways you can go about changing the things that you want. Not everybody wants to change everything about themselves. A lot of people are just like, Hey, I've come, t- I'm proud of where I am and who I am. And I don't feel like this is really necessary for me right now, which is totally fine. And, you know, it's just, you know, pe- people are into whatever they're into. Um, so this extroversion, high extroversion, uh, outgoing, energetic, you get energy from people and parties. You, you, and apparently, you know, a lot of your like long term goals and deep values are kind of rooted in groups of people and how you interact with people. And um, so if you're if you're living with a, an extroverted person and you're an introverted person, you might you know, you might find them exhausting. You might find going to talk to someone exhausting. You might find a conversation with one person absolutely exhausting. Um, I know every now and then I, I have like a conference call with like three people right afterwards. I want to fall asleep. I just want to like, oh my God, like that was tough. Um, but then there are other times I can't wait to go to a party and see friends or see, meet some new people. So to me, there's. I think that's blurred. I think it's blurred, and I don't know what sources from that. What do you think might source from, like, we talked about, you know, positive reinforcement at a young age. Right. What might cause someone to be an extrovert or an introvert, you think? Life experiences. Just direct, like, exact experiences that they would live through traumatizing or uplifting or whatever they might have been that's what causes people to stay to themselves or converse outwards you know what i'm saying so in um in my situation you know 
I I was I I hated school, right? Mm-hmm. I fucking hated school. Like and it was because of the fact that there was so much bullying and stuff. You know, I grew up as a string bean, man. I ain't got muscle and nothing <laughs> like that, you know. So, I I was picked on and, you know, I I guess I'm a little bit more sensitive than some people and whatever. I've I've grown a little bit tougher as I've gotten older, you know, mentally and my skin's gotten a little thicker and stuff like that, but like the what made me not want to go to school and like not be around the people from school was the way that they treated me growing up. So like now, like going into like an educational system or like a group educational system, it just doesn't sound appealing to me or anything of that nature. And that's why like whenever I like try to learn something or like try to you know educate myself on something, mm-hmm. I'll do it hands on specifically with just myself by reading or you know you know learning the knowledge through the internet or whatever or i'll take a virtual course and i will learn it through that you know one-on-one virtually i don't have to be in a group full of people to do it or anything like that um and i feel like that's kind of kind of you know partially the reason why somebody might be that way or another you know what i'm saying so um but yeah um yeah, the uh, traumatizing or uplifting experiences. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what it would be. What For it would, sure. what would set would, people. I would agree with that, man. And but also, man, online courses and uh, online education is getting a lot better. <laughs> like I would do the yeah. same thing. Like you don't need to go to school. I, I mean, in in uh, like elementary school and middle school and high school, you wanted to sit kind of in the back or or middle, just because you don't want to be so close to being yeah i stuck on. out yeah i stuck out man i was i was different i was i was the little techie geeky nerd guy and like you know secretly all the girls were talking to me but they didn't want anybody to know that they were talking to me you know that was <laughs> that was that was kind of that was kind of the, the 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 issue and stuff like that so when i when i like when that like clicked in my head right like people like would hang out with me but they didn't want other people to know that they were hanging out with me and stuff like that. Like that's when it like clicked in my head. Like people just really cared about image and stuff like that. So like now when I go and learn something or go and be a part of something or anything like that, I go and I normally just kind of keep to myself because there's no point in like outreaching or letting people get in to know who you are. Cause then people just go ahead and say what they want, you know? So, and and that's what schools and, and educational is like stem with inside of them. I feel like, mm-hmm. you know, they, they bring, they bring this uh, element for kids to be in and then they get teased and bullied and picked on. And, you know, it's, it's never really been like advanced or anything like that. So I, I feel like that might actually be like partial of the basis for where people are introverted or extroverted is through, school school and educational systems wherever that might be and you have to put homeschooling into play with that Mm -hmm. as well too homeschool homeschool children and everything like that are completely different yeah you know they 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 have such a different lifestyle and atmosphere that they live in Mm -hmm. and you know that i would i would say that they're what staying in it's introverted right in inside yes introvert so i would say that the the children that are homeschooled and kept to themselves or introverted because they have to go out and make friends and stuff like that. They don't get that element of everybody being around. Mm -hmm. And then the kids that are extroverted are the kids that fit into the little cliques and, and sports and football and whatever it might be, you know, in, in school. And, and those are the kids that, you know, end up being the extroverts because they want to go out and be around everybody and be the center of attention. You know, that's, that's a lot of extroverts that like to go out they like to be the center of attention i feel like mm-hmm. not all of them not all of them don't don't come at my throat okay <laughs> i don't i don't know who watches this if you know anybody from my high school or anything <laughs> like that but your uh, um, your high school nemesis is watching. i i he swear asked, every every couple of years man it just happens one of my teachers will like reach out to me you're like an old student and they'll they'll be like, I saw you talking shit, and I'm just oh, like, really? just just like, just fucking leave me alone, oh man. Like God. it happened, it it happens. It's fucking crazy, man. I swear. But you know, so <laughs> <laughs> I saw you talking shit. <laughs> they just somebody sent somebody a screenshot, you know, and it's just like, just fucking leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> like, get out of my fucking life, man. <laughs> 
I graduated in 2012. It'll almost be 10 years. <laughs> <and two years. laughs> <It's> still, <laughs> and they're still fucking they're still following. It. Yeah, man. It just it'll. You always get those you people. It's block like em. it's block like em. it's like the girl that tries to sell you raps. Like, hey, are you a boss man? Then come join my company and sell this stuff that nobody else can sell. Apparently, <laughs> those are the ones that get me. <laughs> Swear. I just, I'm just imagining just uh, you going through your uh, requested messages on Facebook, and then the top one is just like, hey, you talking shit. <laughs> and it's like your high school history teacher. <laughs> That's funny because the problem. No, it's not. Wait, was it history? Yeah, I think it might have been. Yeah. Well, you must have a lot of positive experiences in high school, too, though. Yeah, well, skating, skating was very positive. Mm-hmm. That for sure, hundred mm-hmm. percent. Like completely enveloped. Like that's where that's where I got my confidence mm-hmm. was skating. That's what turned me from being the introvert person that I was mm-hmm. into being an extrovert because I met people that were interested and affiliated and stuff that I liked mm-hmm. and liked the music that I liked and liked to be the kind of personality that I am and. Oh, there I go. Getting a FaceTime call. That's oh, Dylan's got a FaceTime call. You'll see me in a second. But yeah, no, it's 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 just kind of how how it goes, you know. And um, it's really quite uh, quite crazy. Kind of how sorry I lost my feed here, but um, there we go. See me now. There we yeah, go. Hey, yeah. people, bam, back. So it's it's really crazy how like that one thing. Yeah like changed everything for me you know and i guess like that would be probably the most positive thing i could say about it i fucking hated school man i was the last i was the lowest in my class i graduated lowest in my class 40 40, 45 out of 45 i had the lowest grade point average in my whole time why because i didn't give a fuck like i'm being a hundred percent like i didn't care about the homework i because i knew that it was nothing that i was doing in that educational system, like I would have, I would have much rather. Oh, I lost myself again. The Zoom meeting ended. Mm-hmm. I would, I would, I would have much rather gone and and done public education than be in such like a a you know hypocritical Christian. Oh, you plot. went to a like Catholic like, school? No, I went to a, I wasn't a Lutheran. Lutheran. Well, I went oh, to Lutheran geez. and Catholic schools. Man, I hear such terrible stories about. But and here is the thing: is is that I'm I am a Christian, mm-hmm. but the educational system is flawed one hundred percent. And the, the issue that is faced from that now is it's it's a model that gets projected, you know, year after year after year, and they they never change it. So, um, private education and and what you would call quote unquote Christian education does not prepare you for the real world mm-hmm. and low and openness, man. It, 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 it's not yeah. like it's, it's so it's been the same for a long, long time. It's yeah. it, they really, they really just put that in, in your mindset that that's how it's got to be. And that's how there's so much extra, like they, they sugarcoat so much of it. And it, and it's been the same for generation because our parents were a part of it. Now that public education and online education and all this stuff is becoming more popular, um, the the religious factor takes place on Sundays in the churches and stuff like that, and then the educational part takes place during the week. Now, as a Christian, we worship God every single day of the week, of course, but when it comes down to education and religion, the education and religion should be separated. You should learn your religion and your education should be separate from that religion, in my mindset. The problem that educational systems face in christian education and private education is is that they implement you know so many values by education gpa and all it's just a number based off of a score that is given to you off of curriculum that is created by the people that are teaching you that curriculum Mm -hmm. that is the biggest thing about education that does not matter is is that anybody can create any sort of curriculum I can put two questions on a test, and if I put two questions on a test and that test is 100% of your grade in that year, then I can, I can make it be whatever it's going to be. You know, That is, that is the, the biggest flaw within educational systems is that people set a standard 
inside of that and then they throw a moral kind of course behind it we don't believe that man that's not that's not what the christian mindset and the christian attitude is you know so me and what my goals were for life and what i wanted to do in life it changed dramatically when i got out of school and got into skating and all that and now you know i'm 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 there with the help of god where i want to be mm-hmm. you know it all turned out and played out the way that it was supposed to and you know i give examples to people of all the time of why they shouldn't go and be in these places and stuff like that and and you know it, it, if if i can give that testimony and help another person out and you know let them know about better routes and better alternatives i hate to see people spend so much money on private education systems and then their children just turn out to be what they would have been if they didn't spend the money and put them in a different edu- teachers are teachers teachers want to be in places to be in school and and educate children they're not going there just to be you know piles of trash so <laughs> normally teachers trash. normally teachers are chosen <laughs> yeah. in educational systems for the fact that they can can teach yeah so if if you're going to go to a, a public school or a private school the teachers that are implemented by your city should probably if not be better than teachers that are mandated by a private agency aka the the christian school board or whatever that might be you know i think the the lutheran the lutheran schools have their own have their own board of of who gets dictated between the lutheran schools and stuff like that. let me get you on this video because you're you're not on there right now no i'm off okay here i gotta get you on there no so it's um yeah it's definitely no i'm still listening though yeah definitely is um oh sammy said it's not fun it's their way or no way at all yeah it really is because um when i was growing up and a lot of people like to say oh well you weren't listening during this and blah 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 and it's not that we weren't listening we weren't taught the real world values we weren't taught that we were gonna have to do this and do that and and you know we were taught to do what we do in our religious acts towards who we believe in Mm -hmm. and then afterwards what else there is a there is a real life there is there is problems outside of just religious issues you know yeah and it kind of just it just frustrates a lot of people i know that there's a lot of people that have that same viewpoint from being in private education and, and christian education and you know the teachers are far from it they all act like they're all better than everybody else because they're in a christian education and it's not like that you know i haven't heard one good anecdote about a catholic school or christian education really I, no i haven't um and my brothers they were in it for like two years there we go it's not because it's too strict it's not because people can't and i was in both both uh lutheran and catholic education protestant being the lutheran uh education and the the difference between it you know you know if you're in a a math class in a catholic school you know oh well saint so-and-so would have done this and he counted 15 sheep and blah 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 (laughs) it's like why does why is that a a proper why is that a proper value inside right. of education Very metaphorical when you could just apply it just as when you could have life. said sally from the book that's where education needs to be separated from religion regardless of whatever belief you have it's really tough to understand those metaphors when you're young yeah like why you used to go to church and i just never understood like i would always take all the metaphors literally and i'm like this doesn't make any sense to me like you're really saying this happened you're really saying that someone was swallowed by a whale and then in the middle of like well, and I, I just had a really t- tough time because I didn't understand, like, the literary metaphors. And, yeah, I, it's tough at that young age. It's like, unless you m- – maybe people are just pretending to believe it as just, like, as kids. But I certainly couldn't understand. Well, no, it. I had – there were people inside of my school that believed in other things other than the, you know, Lord and Savior and stuff like that. They they believed in higher powers and higher beings and stuff like that. Um but they, you know, weren't, I guess they weren't vocal as much about it as, as I thought they would be. So I guess they didn't get reprimanded for it. 
but also they could have been that way out of fear as well too mm-hmm. you know being re- regardless of how small the school is you know my grad once again it was 45 out of 45 uh, my graduating class was 45 kids most public school classes graduating classes are two three hundred kids you know it's ridiculous anymore they go graduate at freaking eastern university mm-hmm. you know in the in the football field and they um you know regardless of of the schools you're you're surrounded by a majority vote you know you're you're not the majority when you don't believe in something in the christian education system right so you don't you might not want to vocalize that you know um pertaining to beliefs not just pertaining to you know values or whatever you know i'm talking about you know believing in a creator and stuff like that so i feel like i feel like people might not want to share that information but yeah there were people that that did tell that to me um one guy i remember specific he was on the football team and um they were just like yeah he just doesn't believe in god but he believes in a higher power Mm. he doesn't believe in the god that they specifically teach here in the school yeah and so, yeah, there were kids that were like that and talked about that. Um, I d- Connor Cervone says, uh, I'd, go to, I'd go to my private Catholic school solely for the education I got, excluding the religious education. Um, yeah. <coughs> if the religion was separated from the education in these systems, mm-hmm. then I feel like it would be a lot better. Mind you, that doesn't mean that you do not have to practice your religion. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, um, (coughs) and then we go into churches and stuff. And that's just a whole nother. That's a whole nother apple that I don't want to crack right now or a whole nother nut. (laughs) Cracking apples. Cracking nuts. (laughs) Sorry. It's a whole nother. Are you on the. (laughs) No, I sent you an email uh, with the invite. I'll try and get back to it. But yeah, no, (coughs) it's kind of. um, I guess. uh Yeah, we're getting these cameras set back up here. Sorry about that. Um, I guess the biggest the biggest issue that I see with inside of that, you know, and I'm not trying to. to there we go. I got you. I'm in there. We're getting back on there for you. I'm gonna put this uh, phone on this tripod and I'm gonna set it up right. Um, but I wanted to, man, you'd think what d- would it take for these institutions to change? Because there's been a lot of reason to, and I think. Well, a lot of them don't want to face um, um, defunding from sponsors, right? So private education systems get their money from admission from students and stuff like that. But the biggest thing that they get money from apart from that is the donors Mm -hmm. and people, alumni, you know, people that give a part, a portion of their salary, yearly salary Mm -hmm. or whatever they make to this educational system, normally specific to the educational system, right? Like Mm -hmm. there were people that donated money specifically to our school and stuff like that. And, um, you know, they're, they're afraid of losing that because of the people that might be coming through their education system. Mm-hmm. They don't want to see. So those people need to die first of old age. Yeah. Those are the, <laughs> well, those are the people that are, you know, 50, 60, 70, whatever years old. And you're just gonna, you're gonna bare hands that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hopefully people are still paying attention. If not. We will cut all this out later when I post it. Yeah, okay. So it's like being afraid of uh, losing your investors, essentially. There we go. There you are. There we are. Put that closer to you. Yeah, let me get it up here. Yeah. Bingo, bango. Um, it's fascinating. Bingo, bango. You know, I go, baby. I feel like I. <laughs> What's up? How y'all doing? <laughs> Welcome to the podcast. I hear this all the time. I hear it all the time. People's just traumatic experiences with the you know religious education um, yes 100%. and it's mostly because of how just 
strict and institutionalized and and kind of just low in creativity and like this is the way it is and you will do this and it's like there's no real opportunity to really express yourself perhaps or ex- like just think about alternative ideas i think right. one of one of the best uh classes i had in high school and uh this is clarkson high school was english class i remember it, it was mr henwood was his name and we would come in and he would just have like a word on the board He's like, I want you to define this word, like, in your own mind. Like, what does this word mean to you? And I thought that was fascinating. Like, he he might, like, write on the bird that American dream. What is the American dream? What is success? What is – and we just have to define this word. And you would come to find that all these people had different definitions of of this word. And we're just, you know, we're just freshmen and we're just juniors in high school yet. Like, we all have different definitions of this word. And what's to say that it's, you know, that it's wrong? What's – if it – if it's a positive thing and it makes a lot of sense and maybe it's not the exact definition of the dictionary, which how did they even come up with that? Um, the cultural definition, we were defining ourselves in the classroom and there's so much opportunity for openness and points of view and uh, really getting down to like, uh, you know, understanding others and understanding like other alternative points of view. And it doesn't seem like that was really happening in, in these Christian or Catholic schools. It's just like, this is the way it is. Yeah. They, 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 will focus kind of on that mentality like hey it's our way or it's the highway you're gonna you're if you don't do it this way you're never gonna get you know recognized or you're never gonna make it in life and you know they don't teach you about life they don't know about life directly to be able to be teaching it that's Mm -hmm. the problem so they they include all of this to kind of blind them over like And I feel like when I did like vocational training, I did vocational training the last two years of high school. I got to go to the vocational center and learn electronics, robotics, and alternative energies over at that vocational center for two years. Um, And I learned more in those two years of reality and personal expectation versus my whole entire educational career in school, period, Mm -hmm. period. And I really feel like I would have learned a lot more, a lot quicker and been set a lot sooner in life if I would have gone through uh, public education. Mm-hmm. Um, I I think my parents were, were stuck to the stigma of private education means I'm going to have a great kid. I'm going to have my, my kids going to be the best, better than the than the rest. You know what I'm saying? And and some people have that mindset me i just want to do great and be happy you know and and go the route that i want to go i don't want to be a you know neuroscientist or 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 astronomer or it's not too late no i'm not going to be a lawyer you don't want to be an astronomer you want to be like galileo galileo (laughs) mapping the stars (laughs) yeah yeah well if if you don't have an interest you don't have a passion for it you're not going to want to get better at it I mean, I was about to, uh, my first choice was the Naval Academy. I applied to the Naval Academy. I applied to a lot of schools for engineering. <laughs> I was gonna be an engineer. I was in Kettering at this internship, studying how to be a filter press manager, whatever. And I'm like, I don't. It's very clear that I'm not interested in this. I have zero passion for this. I'm looking up film classes on in my little cubicle. Like, I would rather be broke, but Inter- but doing something they actually want to do than to just half-ass this career that I have no interest in. Because there's people who are really interested in this and do really want to be great engineers and great uh, whatever I was doing at the time. And it's just not me. And I want, th- like, there's no, I have no chance against them. And, like, you wouldn't want me as an engineer. You wouldn't want me as a doctor. You wouldn't want me as a teacher if I didn't want to be there. And that might happen if you don't address, like, what you really want. Um one thing that you mentioned that kind of triggered a, so, something I saw earlier, which bum, is, bum, bum. which is, um, man, I am shiny. It's all right. There, it doesn't matter what profession it is. There are good versions of it, and there are bad versions of it. I'm talking about expertise, proficiency, the people in these jobs, and there are some careers. And I don't want to, this might be a little controversial, especially this time. There are some careers that you do not touch and you do not badmouth or you do not try and point out the negatives. Like teachers are heroes. Like, like what? Tell teachers me, are me. heroes. 
Teachers are heroes, but you know what? There are bad teachers. There was, if coming from my school, there was a teacher that got wrapped up with the student, and um, they found out that they were engaging after school hours and stuff like that, and they took no police action. Um, the the city didn't pursue action. The state didn't pursue action. Um, and yeah, um, that goes back to I think the 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 schools wanting to have kind of a crystal clear reputation and kind of sweep things under the rug because they don't want to lose yeah. what they've got. They don't yeah. want to lose all the money and funding and all that. And nobody wants to fund a school where they've got scandalous teachers meeting with students after hours. Yeah. Of course not. That's not only that, because that is that definitely does happen. And that's I would say that's that's an extreme. But even at like lower on the spectrum of poor uh, quality of uh, teachers or whatever, it just people that just don't just aren't very good at, at teaching and like aren't like empathetic to the point where they're not they like maybe they just barely snuck in under like the teaching exam or whatever. Oh yeah, I got a couple of those too. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> but so I saw this the other day or something I just found out. That, you know the third leading cause of death in 2016 maybe even 2017 too is medical malpractice like bad doctors really? oh yeah oh yeah you're not really i mean doctors are heroes too are they not especially during this time i saw this i video. guess it depends on practice you know how well are you certified you know to get a practice you know not every driver that got their license in 1960 is as certified as a driver today they changed the standards yeah unlike and our private educational systems <laughs> dude i saw this video on uh on reddit yesterday that was so disturbing it was this nurse in the hospital just talking just citing all the examples of medical malpractice where people are legitimately being like murdered or being killed by like uh by negligence and she's just like oh they're just saying it's fine you can't save everybody it's fine like and man she was so upset because it's like she sees what's happening and she just sees everybody kind of sweeping these things under the rug uh, just because it's a pand because it's a, a pandemic and people are like so just like do what you can it's okay but like they're legitimately just doing things wrong in the hospital and that's not because that's because there are people who just aren't good at their jobs right yeah when it comes down to that yes yeah and that really struck me as something like we don't address a whole lot like how often. Like, did you know that medical malpractice was the third largest cause of death? No, I would figure that it would be suicide or something along the lines of that. Suicide's probably ranked up there at some point, but I don't know I specifically. Like, like heart disease, car accidents, or like, uh, and then I don't know. I'll have to we'll have to look that up, but it's definitely up there. And but you you don't really see doctors as someone who would mess up, but they do all the time. I was in Thailand with my roommates. One of my roommates got in a motorcycle accident, moped accident. He tried to overtake a vehicle, slid, ended up hitting a barrier, ragdolled, tries to stand up, knee buckles. He's, he's, he's in an ambulance on the way to a Thai hospital. These people give him uh, – do they say they he tore his MCL, PCL, and ACL, and they are offering him a surgery that can fix all three. And I'm like, There's, you better not do this. Like yeah. you never get a surgery in a third world country. Yeah. The continued care alone would is just a terrible idea. Yeah, just any developing yeah. area you want to not. And know. he was nearly convinced. Um, and then when he he decides to not d go through with it, and he flies back home and gets an actual MRI from a good hospital, he finds out that none of that was true. He had like a fractured kneecap, and his like ankle or foot was like fractured too. All of his ligaments were fine. So they want they want the money. They might want the money. They might want the money. They might just be bad at their jobs. Like who knows? Like how when a doctor comes up to you, they're so confident and they're so good at putting making you feel that you're comfortable. And how can you be so wrong? Like to question the confidence of a doctor is really hard. But <laughs> there are some cases where you actually absolutely need to and like you need maybe you need a second or third opinion and it's like that is kind of terrifying to me um because you know there are some you know areas or industries that you just feel like oh these are the smartest of the smartest and that there's there's why would i have any tr reason to distrust them 
And if medical malpractice is the th third leading cause of death, you know, there's reason for concern. Just like there's reason con for concern if you're on the road and you're texting yeah. because, you know, car accidents are the death rate there is outrageous. And, like, you need to be, you know, vigilant. Um, so that was just a tangent that I thought about when you're talking about, you know, teachers. Um, Sam, did Sammy go to uh, a Catholic school as well? Uh, yeah, I think she went to – I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. Um, she went to. Um, you have to name it. That's all right. I've, it might be Gabriel Rashad. Um, so launching back into let me know. the big five personality traits. How far are we? We're four forty three. We've been talking for. We've been on for fifty six. Oh, nice! Minutes. It's been flying by. The fourth personality trait I want to talk about in the big five is agreeableness. Trying Catholic high school. Trying. All right. Not sh no shout out to Shrine. <laughs> um, agreeableness, which is if you're high in agreeableness, uh, you are friendly and compassionate, and you're open to hearing the person's point of view. And if you're low in agreeableness, you're challenging, you're detached, you don't feel um, as much, you know, empathy towards the other person's point of view. And so if you, so this is this has a direct correlation to like kind of the 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 um the difficulties men and women have with each other because apparently there's an inherent um uh women are just inherently more agreeable than men and so they they're more likely to you know just like want to help and be compassionate toward you towards you women are more interested and empathetic towards people while men are a little bit more interested in things and technology and so men might be a little bit more inherently conscientious in terms of the industri industriousness and not being able to sit still. They want to keep on creating things and tinkering and like figuring out problems. And so, you know, when you have a person that's high in conscientiousness, living with a person who's high in agreeableness and, you know, lower ends on, on uh, those as well, or the, you know, high in conscientiousness versus low conscientiousness, high in agreeable, agreeableness versus low in agreeableness, you know, you're going to run into some problems and you're going to have to work things out. And I see that a lot in politics. Like, they say that, you know, the the um, political conservatives are are high in conscientiousness because they want progress and they, they are more efficient and organized and they want to keep on getting things done the way they feel like they've always got things done versus the political uh, uh, liberals are more open to everyone's point of view and hearing them out and making sure people are being represented um, and lower in conscientiousness. So that's just something that like, that's like a, like a, like as old as time, like those kinds of like discussions are being had, like are we moving forward or are we just uh, waiting to make sure, or are we, um, is everybody being accounted for? Are we doing what's best for the entire group or do we need to just move forward quicker or like w it's, I'm doing. I'm not doing a good job of, of explaining this, but I will come back to it at some point. Yeah. I will have a better <laughs> understanding of all of these personality traits. Um, the last one is neuroticism, um, and this is a negative personality trait. Um, if you're high in neuroticism, you are s more sensitive and more nervous. You see more things as a threat um, in life versus something that could possibly help you or something that you want to experience. So people who are high in neuroticism tend to have more anxious energy, more like maybe wide eyed and like cool. looking around more, less composed and kind of like scared easier. Like prey. <laughs> and so, you know, they just, it's like a prey. Like you feel like you're, there are predators out there and you're just like watching, like making sure there's no danger and you're just in a constant worried state and you feel sensitive towards any danger and you see a lot of the world as a threat and that's tough and the opposite of that if you're low in neuroticism you tend to be more secure confident composed and see not see so many things as a threat and you're pretty comfortable in your own reality and you're you feel more safe and secure um which you know that could stem from so many different things and the combination of open openness conscientiousness extroversion agreeableness and neuroticism essentially in this paradigm defines your your identity your personality and how you approach um, people, how you approach 
Oh, yeah. I got to get going here pretty soon because we got a cardio party at 6 p.m. But just to wrap this up, um, Notre Dame prep high school. Just to wrap this up, there are so many paradigms out there, and this is something I'm just kind of interested in. If you're interested in it too, uh, that's awesome. Feel free to comment some, uh, maybe some personality tests that you've taken that you thought helped you or ways to think about personality behavior or inter uh, or just the way you deal with your personal relationships. Um, do you see, do you see, do you, do you categorize personalities in your own head when you deal with people? When you, when you talk with someone that you end up disagreeing with or don't see eye to eye, do you categorize them? I think we all do in a sense, but how do you choose to categorize them is what I'm asking you. Enagrams, yes, I've taken enagrams. Great test. That's the that's the test that is the highest, most highly lauded, I would say, because it doesn't say you are this, you are this, or you are this. It says you are like 90% this. There's like a 70% match to this, and it's like 80% match to this. So you're a combination of all of these kind of personalities. Right. And uh, there's also this theory that your unconscious is active, like the, like a personality is an active thing that is like kind of inside you or in your head that right. you don't aren't even really aware of. Huh. I'll have to. I think I did it back a couple like years or so ago, but mm-hmm. I will retry it. Yeah, I think it's you know I think it's worth just seeing huh. most accurate one I've taken. I got, I took the anagrams when I got investigator, which is cool. Um, there's a certain amount of like oh that's kind of cool. Like it is it is good. It is valuable to know who you are yeah like you're not just some amorphic amoeba I'm a blob of there's something silly to body. you and there's there's something to you and it's they're positive you things. mean you mean i'm not slime you're not <laughs> slime man you are comprised of a lot of positive values and a lot of things that may be holding you back and these kind of personality tests can kind of illuminate those things and they can give you a sense of confidence and security in things that you are based on the best tests we have so far. You know, I wouldn't take an IQ test and, and get a score and be like, oh man, well, I guess, I guess I can't do, that's just who I am. No, you can change these things based on, you know, what you want and who you want to be. And I just find a lot of value in it. So I appreciate everyone who's uh, stuck around to listen. Thank you. Uh, amazing anecdotes. This one flew by. Okay, one last thing. I am doing a cardio party <laughs> at 6 p.m., I'm hosting a fitness class. It's solely free to register. Um, it's just mostly if you're interested in running, getting your cardio up, getting uh, maintaining uh, good hip and leg flexibility, and uh, you want to you know start getting in better shape. I'm hosting this class. It's through uh, Zoom. We're gonna have Tony Nova. He's gonna be a live DJ, and it's a lot of fun. So if you have any interest. Uh, go ahead and send a message below or ask for the link and we'll send it to you. You can also find the link on whatisart.net and go to the FitStream page. Um, I've been sharing all sorts of promotional material and links on Instagram. So uh, once again, thank you for taking part of your day to come listen to us. And thank you. We will be back Monday at 3.30. 3.30, We're going to do Mondays and Wednesdays at 3.30. Whatever Around time. that time. And we're going to continue to try to interact with you guys. So if you have ideas and want to talk about certain stuff, let us know. Uh, Signing off from the internet. And outro video.